The Psalms are filled with the thoughts and words of God through King David. And uh, we have been studying 2 Samuel. Nothing is beyond his grace. Looking at David's life and the time when he reigned over Israel. And uh, a couple Sundays back, we looked at a, a difficult passage of Scripture found in 2 Samuel uh, 14 where um, some, uh, some wicked things happened. Uh, we titled our message, uh, Wicked People Do Evil Things. And we looked at how um, there are at times troubled people who become predators, living a wicked life filled with evil thoughts. The Bible teaches us that God uh, made the wicked for the day of evil. And uh, we understand that nothing is beyond God's scope of uh, view. He can see everything, and he sees where there are enemies. There are wicked people doing evil things. In the midst of all that, you and I have to really grasp that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what it says in Romans 14. And in our devotion today, for a few minutes, I want to recapture a little bit of a thought from Psalm 10, because David, in writing many of his Psalms, has a specific reference to uh, God paying attention. Does God see what's going on? Does God know what's going on? Can God see all of this wicked stuff going on, these wicked people and uh, these enemies that seem to be against me from without? Oh, there's enemies all around. Lord God, I feel like I got enemies everywhere or I just have one or two enemies, but they seem to be ever prevalent. And, and also, too, the fact that David understood the principle of enemies being uh, from within. And, of course, Amnon, his son, was um, a man that, a wicked man, that did an evil thing. And uh, it was awful what he did in the house, in the home, in the palace, uh, and what happened within the home of David and his own family was terrible. And in Psalm 10, we find out David writing some words, calling out to God and, and reminding God, telling God something that God already knows, of course, but he's referencing this as if, hey, God, I want to bring you up to date on the wicked. I want you to know that the wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts that the wicked, God, you know, right? And of course, we know that God knows sometimes we just need to talk to God that way. And I sure hope that you take the time to do that. Because today uh, in our devotion, I want you to understand that there are enemies within. There are enemies without. What does God do? How does God do what he does with such grace and mercy in the midst of all this? And in David's psalm, the second half of Psalm 10, the last few verses, I want you to see just some simple things here. In verse number 12, uh, where it says possibly just before that in verse 11, he hath said in his heart, God hath forgotten. Some people, the wicked, think God's forgotten everything. God doesn't know what's going on. God does. And David said in verse number 12 of Psalm 10, Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand, forget not the humble. Please know, brothers and sisters in the Lord, that the wicked, <laughs> they contemn God. But he has said in his heart, thou will not require it. God's going to deal with things. And God is actually doing that which he needs to do for us right now to help us deal with the wicked, the enemies from without and the enemies from within. Verse number 14 says, thou hast seen it, for thou beholdest mischief and spite to requite it with thy hand. The poor committeth himself unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. God sees what is affecting his people please know that brothers and sisters in the lord he knows what we're going through and he knows it just just know what god knows that the enemies from without and within they're affecting us his people he says in verse number 15 of psalm 10 break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man seek out his wickedness till thou find none be reminded god will judge those that are against his people that's what that verse is saying 
God will do it. God will take care of it. Well, when? Leave it up to the Lord. God sees what is affecting his people. God will judge those that are against his people. Then I see in verse number 16, the Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his land. I see that God still reigns. God is always reigning. God reigns as king over his people. And that just brings me a sense of everything's going to be all right. The king of kings, our God, the Lord, he is still reigning over his people. And we are his people. We are his church. We are the body of Christ. We are the bride of Christ. The Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen, they're going to perish out of his land, but God still reigns over his people. And then in verse 17, finishing out this psalm here, Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. You can guarantee, rest assured, brothers and sisters in the Lord, body of Christ, my God, your God, he defends his people. He hears his people, and he will defend his people. In his way, don't you sweat it. You may be concerned and worried and anxious about whether God's going to deal with the enemies from without, enemies within, that the wicked people are doing evil things, and don't be consumed by that. Understand that God will defend his people. God still reigns over his people. God definitely knows what's affecting his people, and God will judge those that are against his people. Psalm 10, Psalm 9 and 10, David writes each one of them as he is reminded how he has to go to the Lord and remember, just as you have to remember, and, and not have to just remind God, but remember what God will do when dealing with the enemies from without and dealing with the enemies from within. God, in light of being who he is, God will always be there for his children. Please rest assured in that this day. Our God knows where the enemies are at, and God still reigns. He will take care of his people. God bless.